Good morning. This is Glenn from Lithos Cry. I got my cup of coffee here, my cup of Joe, and I'm ready to go. As you can see, I am a weirdo. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about uh, for a few minutes here is a couple weird or strange or stranger things. For the past couple nights, I have been binge watching season four of Stranger Things. And really thinking about this, this show has really taken off and yeah, really have to consider why. And I think there's two elements in it. Of course, it's got all of the flashbacks and the throwbacks to the 80s. And I absolutely love that because I am an 80s kid and I still love the 80s. But it really touches upon a lot of supernatural and spiritual things. And the world right now is very hungry for the supernatural and the spiritual. So when you combine the goodness of the 80s with spiritual, supernatural and spiritual things, you really do have a winning combination. But what I want to talk about today is that in Scripture, there are a lot of strange or stranger things in Scripture as well. I'm not going to spoil the uh, show for you in case you haven't seen all of it yet uh, of season four. I'm not going to do that quite yet, but there are some things I want to talk about. But uh, I want to talk to you about a stranger thing in Scripture, and it's found in the book of Hebrews at Hebrews chapter 13 at verse 2. It says, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. You may or may not know this, but you have may, may have entertained a person or interacted with a person who was really an angel. What this is showing us and demonstrating to us is that angels can and do take on human form. You know, we don't think about this much because in Western Christianity, we've been trained and we've been conditioned to think that angels are just up there in the heavenly plane doing angel things, whatever that may be, playing harps and, you know, just floating around in the air. Or if we do think about angels, um, the way that we think about them is not biblical at all. We think of them as the chubby little cherubs or beautiful women with long flowing robes and halos. And, you know, that may be part of it. I, I don't know. But uh, definitely not the chubby cherubs, though. But angels are actually quite busy. They're not just up there. They're interacting in the earth. And one of the things that we're seeing right now is an increase in both angelic and demonic activity in the earth right now. So this is something that we need to be aware of. So what are these angels really doing? What are they for? Well, the book of Hebrews also tells us in chapter one, it uh, kind of spills the beans right away. It says that angels are ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who inherit salvation. So angels are ministering spirits to help us, those who are saved, fulfill our assignments on earth. Their assignment is to help us fulfill our assignment. This is something that is not taught in most of Western Christianity. They are here to serve us and to help us. And just think of this. There may be somebody that you interacted with or came across for one time or a period of time, and they helped you, and they ministered to you, and then all of a sudden they just kind of like, poof, you know, disappeared. Well, very well could have been that you have been interacting with an angel. And there is scriptural... Uh, evidence that this does happen, and it's actually found in the Old Testament, in the book of Judges, in Judges chapter 6, uh, when Gideon was called to service to help release Israel from bondage. Now, this may sound boring to you as I'm kind of giving the intro to it, but it's not. We have to take off the church glasses, and we have to look at this through a brand new filter, because in Judges chapter 6, it says that Gideon met an angel who was sitting under an oak tree. And it was under this oak tree that uh, the angel gave Gideon his assignment saying, hey, mighty man of valor, rise up and go save Israel in your strength. Well, wait a minute here. Uh, Gideon didn't realize at first this was an angel. So this is what we call a clue. Uh, this angel did not look like what we think an angel looks like. Uh, it looked like a regular person. So here's Gideon getting this word of the Lord through the angel who's speaking to him. And Gideon's like, well, wait a minute, I hear what you're saying, so let me test this. Oh, and here we go, because in uh, the New Testament, 
uh, we are instructed to test the spirits to see if what if they are truly of God and what they are saying is the word of God. And you know, a lot of times we look and we speak of Gideon of a, as a man who lacked faith. Uh, he's not lacking faith in this situation. He is actually testing the spirit. You have to remember, uh, Israel was not worshiping God at all. The word of the Lord was something that was not heard, but Gideon knew enough. There was something there in his background where he knew the word of the Lord, and he's like, okay, I got to test this. And, you know, this is a pretty tall order because Israel was quite small, and uh, Midian and all of its allies that were oppressing Israel and basically ravaging Israel was quite large. So this was quite a large task. And if Gideon was not getting this word right from this person or angel under the tree, um, the result would be death. It would not be a good situation for Gideon. So he wanted to make sure that he had this right. So Gideon went back and prepared a kid, a goat, uh, prepared some meat, prepared some uh, cakes of flour, and brought them to the angel with some broth as well. And the angel said to him, okay, so what I want you to do now uh, is go ahead and put all the, this meat and put these uh, cakes on a rock, pour the broth on top. And then the angel, what he did is he took his walking stick. It was a walking stick and fire arose from the rock and consumed the, uh, the meat and the cakes after Gideon had poured water on the, or poured the broth on the cakes and the meat. So we got two things here that prove that this was an angel to Gideon. First of all, uh, fire just does not arise from rocks. And number two, uh, what he put on the rocks was wet, which is, makes it you know, kind of difficult to engulf in a flame. And it wasn't until after this had happened that Gideon had realized that he was actually talking to an angel. Uh, he did not know this. Now, I know there's a lot of theologians that would say, well, this was a uh, theophany or a Christophany where Jesus appeared to Gideon. And I really have a hard time with that. And I'll tell you why. Because when Jesus or the Father does appear to people in Scripture in the Old Testament, uh, they are required to take their shoes off because they're standing on holy ground and they worship the Lord right there. Uh, this did not happen in this situation with Gideon. So Gideon was testing the spirits. And this is what we're going to have to do today uh, when we encounter or get a word from the Lord or believe that the Lord is saying something to us, is we're going to have to test that. Even if an angel speaks it to us, we need to test it to prove it that it is the word of the Lord and that we're doing the right thing. And, you know, Gideon, even after he realized this was an angel, he set out a fleece twice, um, set out a, 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 a fleece and on the ground and said, okay, Lord, if the fleece is dry and the, the ground is wet, uh, this is a confirmation that it's your word and that happened. The fleece was dry, the ground was wet. And then, um, you know, he set out a fleece again, just wanting to make sure that this was absolutely correct, uh, where it would be the reverse, where the fleece was wet and the ground was dry. Um, so that is how Gideon confirmed and tested. So with all that being said, uh, we do have a lot of supernatural activity in the world today that we just don't realize. We just don't see it. There are angels among us that are trying to help us fulfill our assignments in the earth. And we do see this in scripture. We even see it in the New Testament as well. And that's something that we can talk about at a later date. But I want to encourage you with this. I want to encourage you that you must test the spirits to see that if they are of God. That is something that God wants us to do, and that ensures that we are following what the Lord says or is saying to us to do. Until next time, people, enjoy Stranger Things, and peace out, and rock on.